So we have covered uh, the definition of fault prolapse. I hope you have understood and you will remember it now. Yes. We have covered history of two patients and examination find findings of two patients. And now we have reached a diagnosis. Diagnosis is fault prolapse. Now my question to you is that uh, when we have made this diagnosis, how do we confirm the diagnosis? Prolapse is more so a clinical diagnosis. Wonderful. So any kind of prolapse, may it be a uterine prolapse or a wall prolapse, the diagnosis is always clinical and you need not do any imaging or any investigation to prove your diagnosis. Okay, you can go ahead with the treatment. But yes, before we start the treatment, we must rule out some things and we see we should see little fitness of the patient. So what are the investigations you would like to do for your patient? Ma'am, we, yeah, we will do the pre-op workup. So mm -hmm. we should do a CBC, the complete blood picture of the patient. Her, uh, so maybe we are not planning to do, have you already planned to do uh, surgery for her? You said pre-operative investigation. Uh, Ma'am, we had like we had discussed, you told us yes. the first line is pel pelvic muscle floor exercises. But maybe for these patients, yes. they are probably not the right oh, candidates for correct. that. So and we, we should go ahead with that we are doing the surgery. surgery. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. yes, for both of them. So we will do CBC. We will do uh, RFT, LFT. The sugars have to be done. And uh, other than that, since both of these patients are old, uh, maybe a cardiac clearance also yes. can be sought for them in order to ensure that they are medically fit to undergo surgery and coagulation profile. Anything you would like to add? Uh, a general ultrasound, ultrasound yes ma'am. Very important because mm. always we out, say that yeah. any other abdominal mm. pelvic pathology because the age is like this. Yes, yes There is no harm in one screening. Mm. Then we get to know about hydronephrosis yeah. which can be one of the complications of prolapse, prolapse or bone yeah. prolapse. So we get an And a wall smear also we had taken for both. Uh, yes. Yeah. So wall smear we can take or we can avoid also because they are beyond 67 and 70 oh, yes, years yes, old both and of them, both yeah. of them have undergone hysterectomy. So maybe and they do not have any complaint of any oh, discharge yes, or yes, no, of them. So we can we can avoid that. Right. But uh, ultrasound, abdomen and pelvis, I think to look for kidneys, yes. pancreas, liver, just an abdominal screening is a must. Or any adnexin and mass. Adnexin and mass, maybe ascites which is causing this Pushy, kind of yes, okay. So all these have to be ruled out. That is a must. Yes. Okay. So uh, these patients uh, did you find anything in imaging modality? No, 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 no. In investigation, all their investigation, whatever so we told, yes. were they all right? No, ma'am, both of them are diabetic. Diabetes. Yes. 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 Okay. One is recently diagnosed. Yes, yes, now only she was diagnosed. Yes. Mine is a diabetic. She's on oral hypoglycemia. But sugars are under control? Uh, no, ma'am. Her gly glyco HB is 6.6 mm -hmm. and her uh, random sugar was also 150. Mm -hmm. She's already taking metformin. Yeah, and we had started initially before the surgery also we had asked for an opinion whether we need to start insulin or not. So this is very important. The group of patients we deal with here, mm -hmm. most of the women we, uh, who come to us with complaint of all prolapse will be having diabetes and hypertension. Mm -hmm. So that thing we have to keep in mind when cardiac clearance is very important yes, because they might be having some underlying coronary problem also. And as we have already discussed, that abdominal screening, yeah. abdominal pelvic screening. Ma'am, one must. question can yeah. I ask you? Yes. Just the other day, we had this one patient, uh, the mother daughter with SUI. Mm. So the mother had that uh, coronary bypass surgery she had undergone. No, not mm. the bypass, just a stent placement. Yeah, so you said we should uh, You said we should delay the TVTO by one, one year. year. One year. Is, this is like yes. a set guideline yeah. or something. So good. Huh? Maybe we might uh, have a patient. We have some of the patients yeah. who came to us after undergoing a stent placement in their coronary vessels. Yes, so these women are on some blood thinners, oh, aspirin yeah, yeah. and other yeah, things. Yeah, she was. Yeah. Yes. So for one year, the idea is that one year, it is more risky to stop their blood thinner okay, that is right. idea. rather than doing the surgery. surgery. Right. So after right. one year, they get certain control, then we can stop those things okay. for one week. Okay. So the idea behind one year is the risk period for mm -hmm. cardiac. Oh, so right. if you stop it, maybe one more clot will form. Yeah, yes. least stent thrombosis. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So that is the thing that one year we have to wait. After mm -hmm. that, we, we have can to undergo give with our procedure. We have uh, to give in cardiology clearance. Mm -hmm. If they clear, then one week or five days at least minimum. We can stop and, and then go ahead. Surgery. That is the only idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
what are the options okay for wall prolapse you said we want to do surgery yes we mm. said pessary i think we did not discuss mm. much but no. a word i'll tell you about yes sure. in india you all know that only ring pessaries are available, are available. Yeah. okay and ring pessary does not work for wall prolapse yes. okay in other countries we have space filling pessaries space right. occupied mm. pessaries they work for wall prolapse but uh, we don't have so we do not consider it's that treatment of choice okay yeah. so we have this thing so we finally reach to surgery now tell me in surgery what all options you have first categorize them and in every category there are many surgeries right. yeah. so can we categorize yes ma'am mm -hmm. abdominal and vaginal abdominal, vaginal. And vaginal and abdominal can be open and laparoscopic both Okay, so vaginal, ma'am, the open laparoscopic and robotic, robotic. and robotic, mm -hmm. robotic, okay. yes, yes, and vaginal. Yeah. Vaginal surgeries can be either reconstructive yeah. or obliterated. Obliterated, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so so many options correctly you just uh, described. It can be either abdominal procedure or, or vaginal yes, procedure. Yes. Abdominal procedure, procedure is same, or yeah. we have different procedures. Yeah. Modes of yeah. So it can be either. Open, open it can be laparoscopically robotic. or it can be robotic. Yes, in vaginal procedure, either we can have fixation or suspension or procedure, or that is called the yes, 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 okay. okay. So now tell me, how do you choose out of these many procedures? Yes, what are the factors which will help you to choose? This surgery is for this particular patient. Ma'am, the most important being the age and whether the patient is sexually active or not. Mm -hmm. So on the basis of that, we will decide whether we should go for an abdominal surgery or a vaginal surgery. Because in the case of a sacrospinous fixation, uh, one thing like what you were telling us during the surgery that maybe this deviation is not such an important yeah. thing. Yeah. So deviation of vagina, I want yeah. to see, is it's it overrated? Overrated, overrated concept. Okay. Yes. We feel patient like, theoretically it is a factor, but yeah. actually if you don't tell patient, no patient realizes that inside yeah. the vagina is yes, yeah, deviated. Even in a normal anatomy, yeah. sometimes the uterus is deviated, deviated either to the right, either to the the right side yes. or left side or empty vertebrae and retrovertebrae. Yeah. This is, I think we make more fuss out of out that. Of it yes. could um, just be a physiological yeah. thing also. Yes. Like yes. a new normal for them. Yeah. 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 Yes. Absolutely. Nobody understands and nobody. Till now, so many patients I have seen, not even one patient has, has said, come with this complaint, complaint or something. My vagina is still yes, okay. And the length. And the length. Yeah. So, okay, I'll tell you, there are few factors which we have, com we'll compare few factors for each. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, one factor will be efficacy. Means right. how good this procedure will work. Yeah. The second will be complications. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the third can be. Patient profile. Uh, patient profile. Yeah. Four can be skills of the doctor. Okay. Okay. Yes. Based on this, we that problem we don't have. Yeah. No, but <laughs> well, I have something to discuss for that also. We will discuss that yeah. also. So first, uh, what about safety? Safety yeah. means not safety, efficacy. Mm -hmm. What do you think that which procedure is more effective? Abdominal or vaginal? Mom, abdominal. Abdominal. It is more effective hmm. if you look at the percentage. Do you have the any data. idea the success it's rate? It's 97 and 95. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's around 98% and, and 94 or 97, okay. but both are more than 90%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that is a wide yeah. 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 Second is complications. Right. Okay. And when we are discussing these procedures, basically abdominal and vaginal, when we are discussing, there are two procedures which are more commonly done. So yes, there are more mm -hmm. procedures also. Yes. So first procedure, when we say abdomen, mostly we will be focusing on sacrocolpopexy. Sacro you have to remember that sacrocolpopexy, we have to put the mesh. Yes, right. right. Okay. This mesh is not disapproved by FDA. Yeah. Okay. This mesh can be used according to FDA. FD, yeah. FD had banned meshes only which are vaginal. Vaginal. Yes, yes. Okay. So SUI medullary slings yeah. as well as sacrospinous mesh uh, is uh, no. not sacrospinous, sacrospinous no, mesh is approved. Yes. Okay, that you can use it. Yes. What are the other procedures we, which you can do abdominally? Uh, Ma'am, pectopexy and yeah. hystropexy. A hystropexy means uterus is not there. Not oh there. yeah, vault, vault, vault. Yeah. Yes. So pecto, what is pectopexy? So Ma'am, when it is anchored along the iliopectineal line. Yes, hmm. so pectineal line or white line we use to enter the vault bed. Yes. Okay. But this procedure is more of experimental.
to tell you. Yeah. It is not that open. It is done laparoscopically no, because it is basically it is an easy procedure, mm -hmm. now, but we do not know how it performs in long term. Okay. 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 Like there's no data on this study. Not much of not that. Much small. Uh, and it is not a part cases. of. Even the name is not a part in any of the recommendations. Yeah, not really mm -hmm. it so much. Right? So we take a mesh here. It is uh, so we have to. You're use telling a mesh about here. vector vector mesh. Okay. Okay. We have to use a mesh, and mm -hmm. it doesn't give the normal vaginal access. It makes it little straight Stretches. stretches in and attaches on the sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is, but we will not talk more about it because we do not have long term studies. We don't know how it yeah. performs. Ma'am, you were also told that uh, this because of this stretching, it can cause de novo SUI. Yes. Yeah. It mm -hmm. can cause that we were discussing in yeah. the channel. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. but we, we cannot say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because we barely know. Like it is not, huh? Right. So the procedure which has been used since ages abdominally is sacrocorpopexy. Yes. So sacrocorpopexy, I'm not going to discuss in detail because these two patients we did not do. Mm -hmm. The patient, we have discussed already one case. Yes, yes. on sacrocorpopexy. Yeah. In that case was done uh, by abdominal approach sacrocorpopexy. Mm -hmm. Of a large wall prolapse of, also, right? Very a really patient. large one. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, only few things I'll tell. So, though it has a little bit efficacy, mm -hmm. however, the complications are many. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what are the complications? There is uh, there are a lot of complications which can happen. So, first, you are opening peritoneum. The major difference in abdominal sacrocorpopexy is that we are doing something inside the abdomen after opening the peritoneum. Mm -hmm. While when we are doing the major advantage of vaginal procedure we are totally not op opening the peritoneum. peritoneum. Everything is extra peritoneal so that everything is extra peritoneal so there is no risk of infection going inside mm -hmm. or um, injuries Injury to other above. structures. So here we have risk of bowel injury, we have risk of injury, injury, injury. Mm -hmm. we have risk of infection, mesh we have exposure. mesh related, yeah. mesh can make a um, like Cord like adhesion, mm -hmm. mesh erosion, mm -hmm. mesh erosion, so hundreds of complications mm -hmm. with little 2 to 3 percent increase in the efficacy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we are not so going to discuss uh, which is balancing. Uh, okay. And many people prefer to do laparoscopy, but if you compare abdominal laparoscopic versus uh, robotic, yeah. robotic mm -hmm. is the easiest mm -hmm. one to do if you have the availability. Actually, robotic surgeries, people who do, they say that or who have started. They say that it is not meant for simple surgeries like mm. hysterectomy and all these right. things. Uh, robot in gynecology is either for oncological procedures or urogynecological procedures like birch corpus suspension mm -hmm. and uh, uh, sacrocorpopexy, right. which are difficult procedures where laparoscopy really needs skill and suturing and you right. have to work in a different angle. Mm -hmm. Where robot actually works is much faster okay. and much easier. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we are not discussing these today, we are discussing about Same vaginal yes. procedures. Yes. Vaginal also, uh, in which patients you will do corpoclysis? Those uh, who are not sexually mm -hmm. and medically unfit for surgery. Uh, so the idea was that to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. I have yet to find a patient where I want to do corpoclysis. Okay. As compared to yeah. sacrospinous fixation. Because I think the procedure doesn't take much time. Mm -hmm. Sacrospinous fixation doesn't yeah, take it much time. Not, mm -hmm. yeah. So, colproclesis, those people who are regularly doing, especially in the US, they say that it is a very good procedure. Right. Uh, maybe they have the comparative result or the mm -hmm. compare time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, tell me now, uh, would, you, would you like to tell about steps of sacrospinous fixation? Mm -hmm. so, so, we hold, okay. so, mm -hmm. so, we hold the angles. Uh, first, ma'am, we uh, uh, catheterize the patient mm -hmm. and uh, we identify the vault, the, the vault line, yes. and we hold the edges of uh, both the edges of the vault, mm -hmm. and then we uh, we take stay sutures over there so that we, even in case we lose the alleged process, we don't lose it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where we uh, and and that's our identification point. So that, that's taken as uh, as the top level, and from the and at the end of the introitus, we divide it into three halves: uh, upper one third, middle one third, and the lower that one third. That is posterior, third. posterior, posterior, posterior vagina. Posterior vagina. Posterior vagina. Yes. The imaginary divide into. Four three three parts. parts. Yes, sorry, okay. three parts. Three parts. parts. Yeah. So middle part right. if we approach, where do we enter? Middle in the part in uh, the pararectal space. space. Mm -hmm. If by chance you go to the upper mm -hmm. part, which is upper part and lower part when we say mm -hmm. we are thinking of normal anatomy. Yes. So that it is kept inside, the right. is kept inside. 
then upper part, if you open, where will you reach? In the urethral region. In the pouch of darkness. Ha, the pouch of darkness. Oh, we yes. don't want yes. to reach there. Right. Because it is the entrocele. Vault is there just down if you go oh, to the Because this is the upper third of the posterior wall. Yes, yes. upper third of the posterior wall. You will directly. That's what we want to avoid. Right. So you should not give incision there. Right. If you go in the lower third, where will you reach? The like too close to the rectum. Too close rectum. to the rectum. So if we take the lower part, as you said, subjective will be too close to the rectum. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's the space which we use for rectus and yeah. periphery. Yeah. Called posterior called the periphery. Yeah. That's the space. Yeah. So always we have to give in, go in the middle one third to avoid complication. If you are going there. There is, you will enter the correct plane. Mm -hmm. Then what do you do? You give an incision there? Yes, we give an incision and then we uh, do sharp dissection just for a very short distance and then we go ahead with a blunt dissection with both with the rolling index finger. Motion. Okay. Yeah. Rolling, rolling motion. motion. Right. Rolling motion so towards Towards midline. the midline. Yes. And then we clear the space out and then we reach out to identify the ischial spine. And mm -hmm. once we identify the ischial spine, if we roll our fingers downward, we can feel the fan shape sacrospinous so ligament. So first we have to feel for sacros uh, ischial spine. Ischial spine. Ischial spine. Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. And then we will, uh, if we roll our fingers down, we can uh, we can feel the fan shape sacrospinous mm -hmm. ligament. Mm -hmm. And we know that that could be our site of attachment. Yes. Uh, just above the coccygeus. The upper above the coccygeus uh, muscle. But you cannot feel that. You can mm -hmm. just feel that fan shape back. Ligament, right. And then what do you do? Uh, so ma'am, now we are doing the slightly innovative kind of a thing okay. with this. So first we use the three retractors and we try to visualize that space better. So three retractors is an age old technique. Right. To, uh, see, visualize the ligament. Yeah. In that space you need yeah. three retractors. Yes. Three thin retractors, yeah. you can use Devis retractor. Yeah. So um, important thing is one retractor should be parallel to the sacral spine. Yes, 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 right. And the other two should be uh, retracting the rectum. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, you open that up. Yeah. Now, many people, what they do, actually, I have also done many cases like mm -hmm. this. I have used long needle holder, I have used yeah. laparoscopic needle holder, I have used uh, Shirod Curse hook to do sacral spinous fixation. Mm -hmm. Okay, but whenever you are using these instruments, mm -hmm. you first have to grasp, grasp the it. ligament with some other instruments, yes. yeah. which causes a lot of injury. We don't have that kind of space. We don't have that kind of yes. injury. Mm. And you that pin structures, the mm. nerve is just yeah, next, just next, right, 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 right. right. And even the rectum and is so close yes. by. Yeah. And when you are doing, when you are holding the tissue and pulling it, you have to do something very quick because quick. it tethers the fibers of the sacrospinous ligament. Yeah. Okay. And many a times the nerve fibers get injured. We'll mm. discuss about this this complication right. also. So what we have started, we have started doing a very quick way yeah. so what we do we visualize also yes. because the other problem which i was seeing in the beginning of my career that when i was seeing only i could see the others felt so bored that they were just random and yeah. then without seeing you are assisting you, are so you yes. not yes. see you are not having fun you are not understanding anything mm -hmm. something you are doing so mechanically mm -hmm. and next time if i'm not there you want to do if you have not seen, how will you do first time? Yes, yes. So it's for learning also learning, yes. that you mm -hmm. should see it. Yes. So what do we do? We put a, a small camera, camera. Scope. laparoscope camera right. and see it in the monitor. Right. Okay. Then what do we do? After that, ma'am, we have the gun with us. We have the gun with us. Um, okay, that we put a gun mm -hmm. which is actually a, a mini suture. It's a suture. First, first pass, pass, pass mini. mini. First pass yeah. mini. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have tried many companies, different companies, and finally, presently we are using, using this. this. Yeah. So in that we take a bite, and that bite. How many bites do we take? Two. Two, Two. bites. And what should be this? distance to take those Two centimeters medium to the spine, to the spine. spine. okay yes. why because we want to prevent injury to pin structures yeah. we are who those structures which are coming from greater sciatic notch turning around the spine and going to less, less sciatic notch yes. Yes. so they are not coming there right but it's for one second they are just turning there. Yeah, so right. we have to avoid that area first bite we take that is the lateral bite mm. two centimeters Medium to the spine. spine. The next bite is one medium to the one centimeter medium to the. We cannot one. afford to go more medially because they're direct. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So, and what suture material do we use? 
he was a one non-absorbable and one absorbable yes. so delayed absorbable so yeah. anything yes. you can according to recommendations actually one suture is also enough yeah. mm-hmm. okay it can be a non-absorbable it can be absorbable only thing that when you are using non-absorbable you have to be more careful to bury the suture on the vaginal side yes, which is yes. not be coming in the vaginal, in the vaginal. Mm-hmm. Okay. but the thing is why we are using two because sometimes what happens when at the end when you are tying the knot mm-hmm. it has happened with me however those patients also have taken two bites only mm-hmm. one bite just comes out if mm-hmm. the bite is not good in the sacral spine right. state of it mm-hmm. so to avoid that risk i Better always to prefer two. to take two, two. and i would always advise to take two, two so we take one with um, non absorbable one with absorbable absorbable and take bite and keep them we should always be remembering that which one is lateral which one is medial yes. yes we can use one straight artery and one curved artery and here what we are using one is green color and one, one is blue color yes. Okay. yes then what do we do How after do we that uh, after that ma'am we do the colporaphy the mm-hmm. anterior and the colporaphy because yeah. almost always in this patient you said that both patient have Uh, that line right. in the temple in the center right. of the back yes so okay, they definitely had so they definitely had an anterior compartment, compartment effect yes mm-hmm. and anterior compartment if little bit also is there i think better we must repair. repair it because the recurrence occurs mostly in the cystocele right. right so we did the anterior colporaphy mm-hmm. and after that ma'am uh, we will uh, repair this posterior vaginal wall uh, mm-hmm. the but first you have to take one bite you have taken from mm-hmm. the spine yeah. but now you have to fix the fault also so yeah. one more bite you have to take from the vagina ha uh-huh. through the subepithelial space yeah. yes so yes. you can take the entire full thickness epithelium mm-hmm. also with by pre suture by yeah. for non absorbable you have to take just sub ma'am here yeah. can you clarify first is when we mm-hmm. do this anterior colporaphy mm-hmm. before i was discussing this mm-hmm. with her also that anterior colporaphy we are doing before we tie these sutures because we are getting rid of that extra length yes. no? which might be a problem length means as in the redundant problem. vagina yes. which is causing yes. the defect basically so after but there is uh, no hard and fast rule you can okay. do this step before also ma'am but then if we do that then aren't we exaggerating that defect which is already up you cannot tie okay you can just take bite and keep and that we are already doing no yeah so before you can just take the bite you took huh. the sacrospinous bite huh. and then you take the vaginal bite okay take the, the vaginal bite also side. and keep and, and then and the do the anterior okay okay go ahead ha this is okay no but anterior colporaphy should be done before doing the yes, suture because everything has to yeah, be done yeah. before that because the last because otherwise trip. that defect will be exaggerated yes. right exaggerated means you will not be able to do, uh, do it anything it. Uh-huh. because it will go so high up. yeah yeah you know, exactly yes. okay so after doing this then ma'am this posterior when we were creating this hysterectal space when we were trying to enter so then we repair that first and then we do the final with this tangle yeah. of the suture everything that which i have from anterior colporaphy done posterior okay. uh, sacral spinous space two incisions are yes there. yes we have to close both incisions and then, and then do the final the tightening ha yeah. otherwise vagina goes up you cannot see anterior you cannot see the posterior right right it right. will always remain a right mm-hmm. okay whatever you do whatever spit is hard to reach yeah that's why you always say also do it now because you will never do it later you can't do it you can't do it later the next question is once we have taken bite one bite from the sacral spinous other bite from the vagina yes ma'am do we tie it here no we no. wait for yeah. the all of the procedures every day everything to end yes yes and then because once you tie it it goes so high and so yeah. deep in the vagina that after that you cannot suture it any other yes. okay so everything should finish then only we should tie it yes okay. okay so uh, this is a simple procedure usually it does not take much time uh, suddenly i realized this is i think that patient which you assisted yeah as for assistant yes ma'am is uh, is the hers the hers yeah. right and what she, <laughs> she assisted yes yeah. 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 okay yes. so in the beginning of the video when we started i said that uh, these uh, fellows saw those cases but uh, i think i mispronounced it actually they assisted yes. even when they joined and did they happened the six cases yes. <laughs> and um, every case you assisted yes. yes first assistant or second assistant so i hope you are liking it yes ma'am absolutely <laughs> yeah. okay so now one more question mm-hmm. and with this i'll wind up the yes, case ma'am. discussion for today so, so what happens if this patient complains of pain in right 
hip and posterior aspect of right thigh. Ma'am, that means that the nerve it has been injured. injured. You were telling us that yes. when we're taking those bites, we have to be so careful because those structures are making Things that pass around the nerve. Yes. Yes. So this is one of the known complications. Yeah. It is called pudendal neuralgia. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So if pudendal neuralgia is there, that means some of the fibers are being trapped in the bite. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why patient gets this feeling. Yes. So if patient complains of this, should we go back and open the suture? Uh, sometimes it can resolve on its own. Or oh, every time, times, all okay. the time, okay. it is a self-limiting condition. Okay. Because <laughs> that time the tissues are edematous. So the suture or okay. Immediate injury might cause that kind of pain, okay. but only thing that you have to give some uh, analgesic, analgesic, some muscle relaxant, some nerve coolant like okay. you come on down the pentium, all okay. those things okay. for 10 to 15 days and patient will be fine. Okay. okay, so that is the treatment. Don't think that it is a big problem. Mm. Sometimes it happens, but you have not that pain. Yes. It's just the entrapment of some of the fibers. Yeah. It will become all right in okay. the course of time. It is a self -limit. Comforting to That's comforting to yeah. <laughs> By mistake, this also happens and when I posted uh, the first few videos, people asked me also, there sometimes there can be rectal injury also. Right, yes, it has so. happened in my hand also. Mm -hmm. So if rectal injury happens, what would you do? It can happen. So first or second case when you are starting, it can happen. Yes. Do you panic? No, 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 we never panic. Okay. <laughs> so what do you do? Do you call a surgeon? Uh, if there is a rectal injury, uh, ma'am, will we have to change the approach? We we'll have to, right? Yes. We complete the procedure and... I know after uh, that, but we we'll have to change the approach. You know? the rectal injury, no. So if by chance there yes. is rectal injury, first thing is don't panic. Hmm. Second thing is don't call a surgeon. Okay. Right. okay. Because it is not against anybody, but surgeons are not that well versed with vaginal approaches. Right. You mm. have to understand. Oh, we don't have to that, change the approach no, then. Okay. No. Okay. What we have to understand that that part of rectum mm. is lower third of the rectum. Right. And it is totally extra peritoneal. Right. Okay. Okay. More we are worried when any bubble opens in the peritoneal. Right. 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 Yes. It is actually like 4 degree perineal tear. Okay. 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 So nothing to worry. You just close the rectum hmm. and you can do it, you can uh, finish the procedure and then close the rectum or you okay. can close the rectum and, and finish the procedure. Either way. Okay. I feel better if I close, like now if I have to teach some of my right. shishya that what yes. to do, I will tell them first close because one thing people contamination won't oh, be yes. there hmm. and your mind will be free that you have closed it. Sure. Then you can go ahead and do it. If you are doing there, your mind is still in that. How big is the day? How big is the day? Whether I really able to do, do, do that? It. Should I call somebody? Yes. Okay. So you should not uh, be in uh, this that kind of, of situation. Yes. That frame yeah. of mind. So first close it. Okay. Preferably in two layers with interrupted suture number two zero. Okay. So nothing to panic. It is just extra peritoneal, just about the sphincter. The area is very small. Right, you know, yes ma'am. Just remember that it is just like a 4 degree peritoneal area yeah. without sphincter injury. Right, okay. that's okay. actually a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So sphincter you don't have to say, right. just close the mucosa, keep the patient healthy for 24 to 48 mm -hmm. hours, give her liquid diet, slowly you start your right. laxatives for good sure. bubble movements, finish your procedure and nothing will happen. Okay. Okay. And maybe, yes, uh, suppose when you are dissecting the space, mm. there is a lot of oozing there. Right, yeah. yes, so, do you go and catch the vessel? No, no, no it's, it's, it's a Yes, it's so a venous ooze. It's a venous ooze. Even if you want to try and search yeah. for the bleeder, you will mm. never yeah, be able yeah, to cause more damage. Yeah, and yeah. if you try, if you are taking your cotter inside, just next yeah, to yeah. that is retractor right. behind the retractor. Is the rectum. 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 So, yeah. transmitted injury will injure the rectum. rectum. So, never ever try to do that. Finish your procedure as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. If required, pack it for some time mm -hmm. or close the suture and write right. the vagina. Yes, okay. Still 100% stop. Fine, yeah. Yeah, okay. There is pudendal artery is the only artery but that also is P-I-N-A. Yeah, lateral. 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 So there is not much chance Charms that it will happen right. because we are away from that. Right. When we are doing rolling movements also, if you remember, we are not going like this. this yes, we are going like that. Yes. Okay, that is the reason. 
not to damage the structures right. and to safely roll back the rectum yes. during those movements. Are always away from away the from yeah, important spine. structures. Yes. yes. Okay. So with this, let's summarize for yes, our viewers. If you, we have confused you enough, <laughs> let me summarize it. So what are the points you should know? First thing is the definition. Definition is little complicated as far as the wording is concerned, but it is uh, recommended ICS definition, latest definition, which says that in easy words, it says that if the wall prolapses anything more than two centimeters down from its highest point, mm -hmm. from the total vaginal length, it is a case of vaginal botch prolapse post restricting. Ball prolapse is the word which is used only for post restriction patients. patients. Okay. Usually the presentation is more or less like a case of when they call them prolapse. Yeah. Only thing that patient will give history that her hysterectomy has been done. Yeah. The symptoms will aggravate as the day passes by. Right. On examination, the first thing we have to see that to differentiate it with other rare conditions, whether there is cough or not. Yes. One more thing, uh, Dheera has touched upon little bit. One thing is that we have to check for occult stress incontinence mm -hmm. also. Because sometimes this occult stress incontinence can become revealed after the, after the surgery. surgery. Yes. 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 So we must check that also when we are examining. We have to see whether stress incontinence is present or not. If not present, then replace everything mm -hmm. inside and check once more. And you had told us also, ma'am, that now we need to counsel the patient that on the OT table also we'll be perform, performing an examination. Very, very yeah. important. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes, because so and many factors when they are definitely, the patient is embarrassed, yeah. these are old patients with um, orthopedic problems or mm -hmm. knee joint problems, they cannot be in position, they are embarrassed in OPD, they are not properly relaxed. Yes. Yeah. So what I have seen that what finding you get in OPD. OPD. Yeah. In the OPD is different from the OT So findings, now right. if the patient complains also or if we have doubt, we always try to demonstrate stress incontinence after mm -hmm. filling the bladder with 200 to 250 ml of normal saline. Yeah. And because our patient, we do most of the procedure under spinal anesthesia, we tell them to cough and demonstrate it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very, very practical point mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. all of us must start doing. Yes. Okay. So after like we did in both our cases mm -hmm. also. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So after clinical examination, then we uh, uh, very important for any kind of prolapse, there is nothing to confirm. Mm -hmm. Examination finding is confirmation. But we need to scan other things, we mm -hmm. need to send blood investigation, we need to do an entire imaging oh, fitness screening, test. Mm -hmm. fitness test and screening of the abdomen and yes. 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 After that, we can do lifestyle modification, which mm -hmm. looks very difficult to implement in patients in our setup at yes. least. But yes, uh, it looks nice and writing when you are writing in a theory paper. And if the wall prolapse is not as much, like for yes. one and two, we can still suggest and maybe for a younger patient. Yeah. Uh, I will say that for them also you give some kind of therapy like yeah. pelvic floor muscle training. Yes, ma'am. Just right. lifestyle modification, how much they will be able yeah. to modify Oops. that lifestyle, yeah. lose weight, stop their working habits. Mm. It's not. Yes, cough and constipation, maybe you can treat yes. a little bit. Yes. But sometimes these women will be having bronchic tests, COPD. Mm -hmm. If if the treatment was there, they would have got they treated have by, yes. by now. Yes, right. Right. Because these things has hap have happened because no, people will go for that. They might not come for management of programs, but if patient is coughing continuously, she will go to a doctor. Yes. Okay. So we have to keep in mind, we cannot always tell that, uh, take care of risk factors, take care of modifiable risk factors and prevent those and modify those. Not always possible. We have to give some management. If the prolapse, as you said, is Less. still in the vagina, we can add pelvic floor muscle exercise is good. Mm -hmm. You can give uh, pelvic floor muscle training. If it is still inside, maybe you can try pessary also. Yes, Though it doesn't work, ring pessary doesn't work. But if you have other options, you can try. Mm -hmm. Finally, is the surgical option, which right. can be done abdominally or vaginally. Yes, we have many methods in abdominal surgeries, many methods in vaginal, vaginal surgeries. surgeries. Uh, we decide based on patient, if the patient is young, if the patient is not having any comorbidities, right. if the size of prolapse is very big, because mm -hmm. bigger prolapses usually I prefer to do it abdominally, abdominally. because two bites of suture might not be able to hold that much, that much right? Right. because you have to understand it is not just an empty bag. Six meter meters long, of, oh, yeah. is there, also, is yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. And, and then 
uterus is not there, then it is just a bag with all everything going yeah, into the fetus. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if it is a big, like one patient we have who has a bald, let's very young patient, 37 years old patient, mm -hmm. with a watermelon size, big watermelon size. Yeah, you were telling us about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. But her will do an abdominal procedure. Yes, yeah. But for these kind of patient, I think sacrospinous uh, fixation true. is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it works quite well. Yes. Okay, and both the patients have been discharged with the patients? Yes, 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 we have. We have. Yeah. <laughs> they have <happy>? Yes. <laughs> so they will come back after two months for a review. Yes. And then we'll see. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that's all about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. So there has been a nice suggestion from my two fellows, Dr. Suvriti and Dr. Deera, that at the end of every discussion, especially the case discussions, I must summarize it in a few bullet points. So for the same, now I will give you a few bullet points for wall prolapse investigations and treatment. The diagnosis of prolapse is clinical. There is no investigation required to confirm it. However, it is a good practice point to find out the medical fitness of the lady as well as to screen her abdomen and pelvis for any underlying pathology. The treatment of wall prolapse can be either of these three pelvic floor muscle training. It must be used as an adjuvant to prevent recurrence of prolapse. Pessary, simple ring pessary will not work. However, if space filling pessary is available at your setting, try that. Surgery can be either abdominal or vaginal, which depends on many factors related to patient, 